Oh, we never live left. Live. Hey. So new year, new you, no. No, <laughs> no not new <laughs> me. <laughs> Welcome to the Vault Live, the yes. best and really only place to be yes. on a Friday evening. You guys do not want to miss out on what we have in store for you. 100%. We're back, baby. Yep. We're back on demand, YouTube. You know what it is. And you guys do not want to miss this. We got 3C Live in the building. Ooh. They believe they're going to be killing it, period. <laughs> then we have a very special new <laughs> segment for you guys. You guys now want to miss. I, I can't um, tell them. I'm, sorry. I'm not, I'm not going to tell them. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoy. It's going to they're going to love it, barbarism. Then we got the bishop in the building. We'll be bringing the 2021 heat. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> It's gonna be epic. <laughs> Stop distracting he me. He ended the, the year and he's starting up the year. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, I don't pay me enough for this. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's see, we're going to have an incredible service. Make sure that you are tuned in on various social media platforms. We are on Twitter, hashtag The Vault Live, on YouTube, hashtag The Vault Live, on Instagram, on Facebook. Post your experience. We want to hear how it's going. Post those stories. Say what's up. We want to see you. It's going to be an incredible service. We have an amazing lineup. And we know that even there where you are, God is going to do an incredible work in your life. Even in your life, Paul Paris. You done? You good? Good. I'm good. good. Are you good? I'm good? I see you got your makeup on today. Interesting. Frey Beats. As in Frey. Frey okay. Beats. Okay. All right, so we're going <laughs> to jump straight into it. Incredible service, like we've said, like multiple times. So we're going to count you down yes. right now. Y'all ready? Are you ready? I know y'all in the building already. Add right, in three, two, one. Let go. Yeah. 
praise to the Lord. You are a good God. Thank you, Lord, that you are in this place. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Lord, we don't forget your benefits. We bless you, Jesus. We honor your name, oh God. Come on, young people, lift up a shout of praise right there where you are. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is worthy to be praised, oh God. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that your presence is so tangible in this place, oh God. We know, Lord, that as we enter your gates, we enter with thanksgiving in our hearts. We are a thankful young people, Lord. We are thankful for the life that you have given us. We are thankful, Lord, for the air that we breathe because we know that it comes from you. How many of you believe that today? That the breath that you breathe comes from the Lord. And as we are starting with our first service this year, it might not have started the best way that you have envisioned it. But I want to encourage you with the word of God today because we're going to pray. And when we pray, God answers us. When we pray, He hears us. And this is what it says in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29 and verse 11. God says this, and I want you to picture God saying this to you today. He says, for I know the plans I have for you. They are good plans, not for a disaster, plans of a hope and a future. 2021 will be a year where God shows himself strong on your behalf. God doesn't have bad plans for you. God has a good plan for you. It's a plan filled with hope. And all we need to do is believe it. All we need to do is understand that God knows our situation better than we know our own situation. The Bible teaches us in Luke chapter 12 and verse 7, the Bible says that even the hairs on your head are numbered. God knows you. He knows what you're going through. He's seen the attack that's on your family. He's seen the pain that has been caused during this pandemic. He sees you. And today he's saying, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm not going to leave you by yourself. But today I'm going to show myself strong on your behalf. So right there where you are, I don't know where you, are, where you might find yourself this evening. But understand that the same God that is here in this venue is right there with you. And if you have a need within your life, I want you just to lift up your hands. Just as a sign of surrender. When we lift up our hands, we are saying to the Lord that He must take everything. And just there where you are in your own words, I want you to begin to start crying out to the Lord. Just cry out to the Lord the God that hears you today. Let him hear your voice right there where you are. Lord, we need you within our lives. We need you, Lord, within our families. We need you within our bodies, oh God. We need you, Lord, in our finances. We need you in this year. We know, Lord, that whatever you are in, it shall be forever. No longer shall we try out of our own strength. We know that our flesh profits nothing but we give our situations over to you lord god just give him your family right there where you are just give him your health you may be sick right now lord i take authority over that sickness that disease that is upon our young people right now by your stripes there is healing in the name of jesus lord there are those that are suicidal within themselves those that are hopeless, that want to give up. I pray right now for a revelation of the love of God, that they will know that you have a good plan for them, a plan to prosper them, a plan to give them a hope, a plan to give them a future. It is in who you are. I pray that you would provide for every family right now those that don't know where their next meal will come from i thank you that jehovah jireh the lord our provider will provide right now in the name of jesus and lord irrespective of the need we take authority over every principality and power of darkness today and devil we command you to let go of our families to let go of our lives to let go of our ministry this year we will be made fruitful this year we will multiply this year we we will subdue, replenish, and have dominion over every area of our lives. We are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We see the way that God sees, and we thank you, 
Jesus, that it is done right now in Jesus' name. Breakthrough and deliverance is our portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. And just say, well, you just begin to receive it. Just make it yours. If God has done it for you, just say, thank you, Jesus. Just appropriate it. Appropriate it in faith. See through the eyes of faith. See God coming through for you in your family. See that sickness within your body leaving because the blood of Jesus is covering you right now. And thank you, Lord, that it is done. Come on, just give the Lord a big hand of praise if you believe that he has done it for you. We glorify your name, oh God. We praise your name, Jesus. We lift you up, oh God. We receive it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Just receive it right there where you are. Comment amen. Shout amen because God has done it for you. You may take your seats. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 2021, baby, we are back. And I'd like to welcome you to our latest show, our latest segment called Dr. Love. So many of you in this time, in this season, have dealt with so many issues, so many issues of love. And I've got two very special guests with me who reached out to Dr. Love, asking for advice. We're going to play Shalom's video so she can tell you what's on her heart. Hi, Dr. Love. Um, so this guy I really like, and I know that the Bible says that he who finds a wife finds a good thing. So I've been wondering that, um, as a God-fearing woman, is it okay if I could like shoot my shot? Or is it, I don't know, like, I need help! How are you doing, Shalom? Shalom, you're not the only one. So many ladies out there wonder, is it okay for me to shoot my shot? You know, Shalom, I love the Bible. The Bible has answers for everything. As your video came into me, the word of God came to me in the book of Matthew 25, verse 28 to 30 in the message translation it says get rid of this play it safe who won't go out on a limb throw him out into the utter darkness shalom if you do not shoot your shot you will end up in the darkness nelson mandela once said you miss every shot you don't take amen See, the devil is always there playing defense. But if you allow the devil to play defense, you will end up with offense. Come on. Come on. And we all know offense must fall. Shoot your shot. I'm shoot, gonna shoot my your shot. I'm going to shoot my shot. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Unati joining us on the stage. And she has something on her heart. She sends a video to Dr. Love and we're just gonna show you what's on her heart. Hey, Dr. Love, um, I need help. So there's this guy that likes me and I kind of like him back, right? But the problem is that I'm not really for a relationship right now, like at all. So could you please kindly help me? <sighs> so 
How are you doing, Unati? Would you like some chicken licken? No, I'm, I'm okay. It's okay. It's okay. okay. I'd like to thank Chicken Licken for proudly sponsoring this episode of Dr. Love. <sighs> Unati, here's what you need to understand because I'm feeling this man is from uh, Tree C. Tree C. C. There's something about these Tree C boys. See, they've been raised in a way that they should never give up. So, you need to understand that this is all your fault. The problem is you said, I am not ready for a relationship right now. See, the sentence was fine until you said, right now. See, here's the thing about these tree C boys. Okay, so she's not ready for a relationship today. How about tomorrow? How about next week? How about the week after that? See, you need to understand. See, you, you's a lovely girl. You's all nice and sweet. But it's just how they trained. So you got to change how you speak. See, when God spoke, it happened. So when you speak, it's either got to happen or not. The Bible says, he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. Baby, you decide whether you want him to find you or not. If he comes to you and says, Unati, I found you, you say, boy, you better look again. I feel there's a lot of us in here that got to say, boy, look again. Some of y'all got a man sliding into your deer. You got to tell him, boy, look again. Some of y'all been texting a girl. She is not interested. I'm going to say it again because it went quiet. She is not interested. You'll be okay. Would y'all like some chicken licking? So I just want to encourage all of you today. What you say is so crucial. Because although men don't listen, they hear you. Although men don't listen, they hear you. So you better make sure he hears you. So I suggest you get on your phone right now and you text him and you tell him I am not interested. All of y'all on YouTube, you know who he is. You better get on your phone and text him and let him know, I am not interested. Valentine's is coming. God is my boyfriend. Hallelujah. Did you text him? You're about to text him. Text him right now. We got time. It's Dr. Love, ladies and gentlemen. We're so glad you could join this season premiere of Dr. Love. If I'm not fired, I'll see you same time, same place next week. Don't miss it. Dr. Love. Shout out to my band. The Love Boys. Play us out, Love Boys. Yeah.
Are you ready to give? Log on to my3c.tv for cashless donations. Made safe, made simple, made smart. Choose your donation option. Enter your amount and press pay now. Choose one of our easy and convenient payment methods and you're good to go. You can give via credit or check card, instant EFT or the Masterpass option. My3c.tv Cashless donations. Made safe, made simple, made smart. Fix your eyes on the screen for the QR code. It's a beautiful day in Johannesburg and we are in Katlehong. We are at the branch of um, Power, which is the people opposing women abuse. And um, we are here today to do a food drive for ladies that have been abused. And um, we want to thank the Makhlasedi Foundation. We want to thank Pastor Bert and Shanae um, for this initiative. We're just here to come and love on these ladies, come and show them our support, to come and encourage them through the word of God. And um, we know to, that, that, that uh, God has got great things in store for them. My name is Cindy Mashandi. I'm a social worker at Get Home Office in this office. Um, what we do is we provide counseling to clients that are experiencing domestic violence. We also run support group. We provide telephone counseling as well. Um, in the past five years that I've been working here, we haven't received something like this. Uh, so to get this, because we normally get uh, food parcels for our clients in the shelters. So they're very much excited. And during this uh, year, it's been a tough year. Most of the clients have lost their job. They've been retrained. So to get this, it really, really means a lot. I really want to appreciate the Matlasedi Foundation for coming through for us. With being under power and help us a lot, they're always looking out for us and we help those foundations coming through for women that have been abused, like me, with my baby. Because when I came to the shelter, I was with my baby. I've been coming there, was depressed, but coming now as I am, as a woman of where I'm trying to strive hard for myself and my family. So I just want to say thank you very much to Power and Mata City Foundation. Thank you. I'm here, Ka, Ka Power, and I would like to thank Mata City Foundation for the food. This food will mean a lot to us because I have three kids, I'm not working, I feel like I can't, so it will mean a lot. Hello, I'd like to thank Matasidi for what they have done to us. It really means a lot for us. We didn't expect this. There is a saying that says, the hand that gives is more blessed than the hand that received. God bless you and we really appreciate what we have done. We have no words, more words to say. Thank you very much. What a powerful clip. Isn't that uh, awesome to see what we are doing as a church in the Matla City Foundation and uh, really bringing relief all around the, the, the country to so many families and so many homes. And we wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for your giving. We wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for each and every person deciding, you know what, this year I'm not going to be a taker and uh, I'm going to be a giver. And you know, we've uh, faced a difficult season in this pandemic, but I want to 
encourage you as a child of God. I want to encourage you as a as a, a woman of God, as a young person of God, as a young man of God, that you are not going to sit back and watch the world carry on in devastation and struggles. I want you to decide that you're going to be a giver in 2021. The theme of the year is fructify. Come on, say fructify. All right, type it there in the comments. Say fructify. All right, we are going to be fruitful this year. Amen? Say, I'm going to be fruitful. Say, I'm going to be fruitful. And I want you to understand that to be fruitful, you've got to make a decision that you're not a taker, but yet you're a giver. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9, you must each decide in your heart how much you're going to give. In other words, so many times we find ourselves struggling because we have decided to struggle. We have decided to be poor. We have decided to go through lack. We have decided to make excuses. Yeah, get COVID. Yeah, it's 2020. Yeah, get lockdown. I can't. No, no, no. Decide within your heart today, I'm going to give to God. No matter what I'm facing, no matter what I'm going through, I am anointed. I am fruitful. Say, I'm fruitful. Amen. And you know what happens in Luke chapter 7? A woman came to Jesus in verse 45. And she came to Jesus with an alabaster jar of perfume. And you know what? She, we realized there that when she started washing Jesus' feet and anointing him with this alabaster jar of perfume, it was all that she had. It was everything she had. And at that very moment, Jesus was sitting in a mansion having a party with a man called Simon. And he tells Simon this, says, Simon, you know this woman hasn't stopped washing my feet. You only washed my hands when I walked in. This woman hasn't stopped kissing my feet. You just kissed me on the cheek. This woman has showed me that she loves me more than ever because she gave me the most expensive gift ever. She gave uh, an alabaster jar of perfume, which is about 6,000 rands in today's time. She gave everything. And Jesus says, you know what? She's blessed because she gave even in her struggle. Even when she had little, she gave the most. Even when she had the least, she gave the most. So many of us, we just decide, no, I'm just going to give whatever I have. No. Decide that you're going to start this year giving the best to Jesus. Amen? Amen. And we're going to, uh, as, as you saw there in the screen, there was a QR code. You can give uh, and just go on our website, my3c.tv, and give God uh, an offering for the year. Give God your first fruit for the year. Give God your, 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 your tithe every month, every single month. Keep honoring God, and you're going to see the blessing of the Lord upon your life. Just like this woman, I challenge you, give God your best. In your most difficult time, give God your best, and you'll see the hand of of God over your life. Amen. This is going to be a fruitful year. Yes. Let's give unto God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. Right now, as we make a decision that we will not be takers in 2021, we will be givers. We will be sowers. We will be just like those so many who have uh, enabled us to go on, on uh, Mahlasedi drives, Lord God. We will be the ones who participate in this giving, Lord God, because you give seed to the sower and bread to eat. So I thank you that you will provide for each and every one of us. I thank you that we can just pour out our love on you like this woman poured out her perfume on you. We can just declare, Lord, that we need you, that we are nothing without you, and we will not give what uh, does not cost us anything, Lord God. We will not give you loose change. We will give you the best, just like this woman gave you her, her best, Lord Jesus. Receive our tithe, even in the difficult times. Receive our offer Offering, even in the difficult times. And I thank you that you will multiply it back to us, Father God. You will touch homes. You will touch families through our giving, Lord. The gospel will be spread all over the world. And for that, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. If you believe it, shout amen. Are you ready to give? Log on to my3c.tv for cashless donations. Made safe, made simple, made smart. Choose your donation option. Enter your amount and press pay now. Choose one of our easy and convenient payment methods and you're good to go. You can give via credit or check card, 
Instant EFT or the MasterPass option. My3C.tv cashless donations. Made safe, made simple, made smart. Fix your eyes on the screen for the QR code. Our 3C app is now available. Download Community Character Courage on your app store. This app is just for you. Get all the latest articles, sermons, and audio or video formats, as well as connecting with us live. This app is just for you. That is Community Character Courage, so you can take the gospel with you everywhere. Present its fourth album, Good to Me, with songs like. Perfect love. First. Great exchange. Umu Segim. Live's fourth release, Good To Me, available on all digital platforms including iTunes and Google Play Music. We are back at the Bottle Live. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. You ready for the Word of God? Come on, somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hear you. Welcome again to everyone joining us via Facebook, YouTube. Uh, if you're tweeting and watching YouTube, hello. And then Instagram, whatever, I don't even know. You can't even watch it on Instagram. So basically, I just said that for the vibes, right? And we're going to get into the word in Acts chapter 2 and verse 40. We're going to begin there. The title of this segment of the chapter is called A Vital Church Grows. Everybody say, A Vital Church Grows, right? So... I'm excited about this, the, the Lord placed this on my heart, but before we get into it, let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of, of being inside of your holy temple, of being inside the building, the church today, where we can hear and learn from you, Jesus. We know that you are present, that your Holy Spirit will pour your love out into our hearts, convict us, and that your word will pierce our hearts like a double-edged sword. Uh, uh, let your presence and your love be rooted and grounded deep within our hearts. It will never be the same as of this moment. Holy Spirit, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done, O God. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. And in Acts chapter 2, verse 40, it says, And with many other words he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received this word were baptized, and they, that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. Wow. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. Verse 43, then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. And I want to skip to a different verse or I'm just going to keep going. It's fine. In verse 45, they sold their possessions and their good and divided them among all as anyone needed. So continuing daily, everybody say daily, with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Amen. And I love, I love this passage of scripture, especially where it goes to say, that they gained favor with people after praising God, but that came after they did what? They continued steadfastly in apostles' doctrine, fellowship, the breaking of bread, and in prayer. Now we're going to break down those four things, and we can't get into too much detail. Maybe other weeks there's a lot of 
information to learn about all of them. But point number one, they continued steadfastly in apostles' doctrine. What does apostle mean? Do you know? I'm waiting for you to think. Maybe you know. Maybe you don't know. Right? Apostle means sent one. A sent one. Someone that is sent specifically for you in your life to mentor you, to teach you, to lead you and guide you in the ways and the word of the Lord. Now, why do we need an apostle in our lives? Thank you, Jesus. Do you know why? Does anybody have younger siblings in the house? Anybody have older siblings? Or maybe you are the youngest sibling. I'm the youngest brother of three brothers, but I'm the middle child of six children. Come on, and I have three little sisters, Caitlin, Jordan, Madison. If I'm correct, it's 12, 10, and 9. I stand under correction. You know if they're listening to me, <laughs> when I get home, there's going to be trouble. But anyways, this is the reason we need an apostle, because all of us have some things that we want and we think that we need in life. But an apostle is there to help you understand what you really need to conquer, what you really need to grow. And I can tell you something about my three sisters, as if any of them could choose what they would have for breakfast, for lunch, for snack, nap time, whatever, I don't know if that's a thing, or for dinner, they would say ice cream, ice cream, and ice cream. Let me tell you, my sisters love ice cream. Let your guys, like you know when it ends up, my one sister, it ends up here. Like she'll be eating ice cream and it's on her nose and her forehead. I said, what did you do? Did you like put your face in the bowl or what happened, you know? And that's the thing is the reason we can't allow them. All of you should know this, that if you eat ice cream, breakfast, lunch and dinner, you're either going to get diabetes or something, heart attack. Who knows what's coming first? And you're going to suffer. You're going to get sick. You're going to struggle to grow because your body needs more than just sugar and dairy to develop. And it's exactly the same in the spiritual realm. You can't grow as a disciple, as a follower of Jesus, as someone who wants to be a Christian and follow Jesus. If you don't have someone that tells you what you need to do in your life concerning the spiritual. Because anybody can take the word of God and make it say what you want it to say for your specific situation. You can also then quote the scriptures that you want to hear when you're going through something specific. So that's why you need someone because you think you must go right. Your leader is going to say, no, hey, wait, you need to go that way. Jesus is that way. Why are you going that way? And sometimes you're going to be like, you know, you get scared. You ever get scared? I get scared very very easily. So if someone just walks in my room without knocking, I jump and then they're like, what were you doing that I shouldn't have seen? I was like, ah, I was just watching YouTube. You just scared me. I can't, I can't help it. And that's going to happen sometimes. Let me give you an example. Imagine there's a dad and a son, or even just a guy and a guy. And this guy is walking across the road. He's going, you know, he's got that bounce in his step. You know that one, that one. Can the camera, I'm just testing the camera. No one really walks like that. If you walk like that, please let us pray for you after the service. I'll give you my WhatsApp number personally. If you walk like this, there must be, I don't know what's, what's going on. But imagine this guy's walking across the road. He's got his headphones, his earphones on, and he's jamming. But there's a bus. There's a bus coming like this. It's flying, and it's a red light, but he doesn't care. He just wants to go. Maybe he didn't see you. What are you going to do as the person that sees this guy about to get hit by the bus? Are you going to say, hey, man, please move out of the way. You're about to die. Are you going to do that? Or you really know? What are you going to do? You're going to say, bro! And then he's not going to hear you because he's, he's busy going. He's busy going. So you're going to run. And you're going to run and you're going to spear tackle him, Triple H, John Cena, Randy Orton, him out of the way of the bus. And when he gets up, He's not going to say, oh man, why did you tackle me? I wanted to get hit by the bus. He's going to say, dude, thank you so much. I'm in pain, but I'm okay. Thank you for saving my life. You see, it's exactly the same when it comes to discipleship. Your pastor's going to run. He's going to tackle you maybe with his words or with a phone call. And he's going to say, hey, why weren't you at prayer this morning? Why didn't you have Saul? Why didn't you read your Bible? The wrong reaction is to say, oh, no, oh, no, I didn't want to. You have to say, thank you for saving my life. 
I hear you. Thank you, God, that my leader has been sent into my life. Thank you that he can see what I can't see. So that's the apostle's doctrine. Step two, fellowship. Somebody say fellowship. That's a very, a very weird biblical word to use. So we can call them friends. Do you guys have friends? Who doesn't have? Ah, this guy said no. Whoa. My brother, are you okay? Are you okay? Okay, he says it's fine. <laughs> right, so if you have friends, I'm going to share with you an awesome scripture. I always just forget what verse it's in. So let me double check. I know what chapter it's in. I just forget what verse it is. It's either 35 or 37. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Yo, I said 35 and 37. Time it's <laughs> verse 33. It says, do not be deceived. Oh, goodness. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Evil company corrupts good habits. I'm going to read the NLT to you. Don't be fooled by those who say such things. For bad company corrupts good character. Bad company corrupts good character. I don't know the definition of um, corrupts. You know Pastor Shanae will always come and touch, tell you all the words, what they mean. Goodness me. And that happened in English. When we did speeches in English, your teacher would choose a word in your speech and say, what does that word mean? Yo. So throwing big words in your English speech in my school. It's the time my mom was my principal. She was the one that was. But anyways, I don't know how to define corrupt, but um, I had a PlayStation 2. Shout out, throwback. If anybody had a PlayStation 2, 2007. What a long time ago. Yo, that's when I remember having it. So I don't know when we got it or when it finished, but I just remember 2007 was a year I had a PlayStation 2. And we had those little memory cards, and you would grind and save your games on that thing. And for some reason, one day you just show up, data corrupted, restart, start again. You just, yo, your heart breaks. Dude, you're seven years old. You're seven years old. You have to restart Need for Speed Underground 2. No. No, guys. No. Corrupt. Finished. It's done. Which means no matter how hard you try, if you're saved, if you're a leader, if you're a pastor, bishop, apostle, if you hang around the wrong people, your character will be corrupted. You were going to start doing things you thought you would never, ever do. Maybe you despised it. Maybe you didn't like it. But if the people that you hang around are like that, eventually you will be just like that. It's inevitable. I'm inevitable. It's inevitable. It's going to happen. I'm telling you now. If you don't want to listen to me, like it said in Acts chapter 2, verse 41, that those who gladly received were baptized. Those who didn't gladly receive weren't baptized. So those who gladly received, those who are listening to me right now, you have some friendships you need to cut. There's some people in your life and you keep praying, oh, but God, but God, I go to church, I read my Bible, I pray, I call my disciples, but you're hanging around the wrong people. The last person you want to speak to is your leader. The last person you want to play PlayStation with is your soul brother. Today, there needs to be a change and a passion in your heart to say, Lord, I will surrender anything to make sure that your kingdom can come in my life. And that's what it says in Matthew 16, verse 26. What's the point? You gain the whole world, but you lose your soul. Your friends can't get you into heaven. I can drop the mic and walk off the stage. When you stand in front of God, Johnny's not going to be standing next to you. Your girlfriend's not going to be there saying, oh no, but God, he tried his best. He tried his best. If there's people in your life holding you back from the potential that God has inside of you, you need to cut it. You guys remember that song? Cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. Number three. Breaking of bread, communion, important. Jesus says that as often as you can, sit down and partake of the bread and the blood in remembrance of me, in remembrance of what? Of what Jesus did for us on the cross. 
He shed his blood in seven different places. I don't have time to go through all of that. I'm going to do five confessions with you very quickly. Number one, through the blood of Jesus, you are redeemed from the power of the enemy. What does that mean? Redeem means bought back. Anybody own a suit, even clothes you've ever got tailored, you ever get jeans tailored or whatever? I have a friend that gets his tracksuit pants tailored. He still doesn't want to tell me where to go. That guy's so dope. Anyways, and when you take your suits um, to get tailored or to get fixed, you, you pay for it. They give you a slip. You go. You come back when they call you and tell you it's done. And then if you don't have the slip, you can't get your suit back. Now, the good thing is that Jesus paid the price 2,000 years ago, and he's still alive today. So with, edit, with, with, with um, the sin that you used to live in, the power that the devil used to have on, over you, whichever you were struggling with, whatever you were addicted to, all chains are broken, all strongholds are pulled down, because through the blood of Jesus, you have been bought back. You have been redeemed from the works of the enemy. Point two, by the blood of Jesus, you have been forgiven of all of your sins. The Bible says that God removes your sin. He cleanses you of all unrighteousness. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. And he forgives you. He removes your sin as far as the east is from the west. As far as the east is from the west. God doesn't remember a lot of people which number two and three link together through the blood of Jesus. You are cleansed. And justified. All three go together. I love them. Cleansed means you wash now and continually. When you walk around the, uh, the right people, in the spirit, you're being washed. You're being cleaned. Oh, man. You don't even know it. But when you hang around your pastor, God is cleaning you. God is cleaning you. Come on, somebody. Because through the blood of Jesus, I'm cleansed. And because I have fellowship with others in the light, I'm cleansed now and continue. Point four, through the blood of Jesus, you are justified. God sees you as if you have never sinned. Now forgiven, justified. Once you've been forgiven, you are cleansed and now you're justified, which means God doesn't remember even the first sin that you did when you sinned the first time in your life. I was seven and there was cake in the fridge. It was my birthday cake. My mom said, hey, don't eat the cake. In my mind, I was like, Mom, you know what's going to happen. And then, then my parents went somewhere. And then I ate the cake, I ate the cake, I ate the cake. My mom came home. She's like, who ate the cake? They lined me and my brothers next to each other. Who ate the cake? Now, I had stuff on my face. I just didn't know. She's like, Pearson was a Jew. No. Damien was a Jew. No. Tristan was a Jew. No. Okay, we believe you guys. We're going to ask one more time. Pearson was a Jew. No. Damien was a Jew. No. Tristan was a Jew. No, mommy. And then she's like, but what's on your face? Mwah. And she caught me red-handed. That's the first time I sinned. But you know what's crazy? Even though I remember it, God doesn't remember. Even though I lied and I deceived and I backstabbed my own mother, God doesn't remember that. God sees me every day. I wake up and I get into his presence. He says, I'm proud of you. You're my son. That's what he says. I've been justified. Five, sanctified, set apart. Come on, somebody. Set apart for the purpose of God. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. John chapter 29, verse 11. There were, uh, uh, um, I think it was Israel, if I'm, I stand under correction, that were captive for three years. Might not be Israel. But the, the nation was under suppression for three years. And while they were suppressed, there were false prophets saying God's coming back, God's coming back and saying this and that and lying. And in chapter 29, God says, I know the plans and the purposes I have for you. They may look like there's no way out. They may look like there's no provision, like there's no God, like there's no freedom. But I know plans of a hope and a future. You've been sanctified, set apart. I have a special purpose for you to achieve in your life. And point number four, prayer. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. The devil sees Jesus in you, and he gets scared. That's why he works so hard to distract you, to lie to you. Because he knows once you take Jesus seriously, that hell is going to be empty, and heaven is going to be full. 
So you need to pray and fight against the devil because he doesn't like what God wants to do through you. He doesn't like the person you're going to become. He doesn't like the way you're going to preach, the way people are going to be set free when you pray for them, the way God's going to provide when you pray for people, the way people are going to be healed when you pray for them. He doesn't like that. So you need to pray every morning saying, Lord, I need your grace. I need your blood to protect me, to cover me while I go out today and I live in your purpose. Lead me not into temptation. Thank you, Jesus, but deliver me from the evil one. And they continued in one accord with simplicity and gladness in heart, having one purpose. What's our purpose? To make heaven full, to make hell empty. We are all called to the ministry of reconciliation. There's no other calling. No way in the Bible you called to become a soccer player. Now I'm not saying you can't be a soccer player. But if you're a soccer player and you're not winning souls, then you're not fulfilling the purpose that God has for your life. Not Tristan, not 3C, not the vault. God is calling you today. And maybe you've never received him in your life. Maybe you've never spoken to him. Maybe you... Maybe this entire sermon just went over your head. And you're like, man, um, I don't know what's really going on. I'm going to give you an opportunity. So just there we are. Just bow your head and close your eyes. We're going to become aware of the presence of God. And listen to me. The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 3, that unless a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Today, I'm going to give you two opportunities. And God is going to speak into your hearts. If that's you today, you feel that you need to accept him into your life. You have never said you are my Lord and Savior. You've never believed in God. I don't know your situation. And you maybe you're here for the first time, but you feel convicted. You want to do more for Jesus. You can only get into heaven if you say, Lord, I surrender my will and I accept your will. And I am declaring today that you are Lord and Savior of my life. And I'm going to pray a prayer with you and God's going to work deep inside of you. And you're never going to be the same again. So on the count of three, you can say this in your heart or in your mind uh, uh, so that you're not embarrassed around the people around you. On the count of three, just say with me, say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And if that was you, if you said that, I'm going to pray a prayer with you and God's going to break every single chain over your life. Say with me, say, Heavenly Father, I need you in my life. I am a sinner. I confess today with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you are Jesus Christ, died, who died and was born again and defeated the gates of hell. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. And through your blood, I can be made whole. I am clean. I am cleansed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that your word says that I can be a child of God. Amen. Amen. We are so excited for those of you that just said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We're so excited um, to have done this and, and been here with you guys. And if you said that, if you said yes to Jesus the first time, second time, third time, thousandth time, there's going to be a link where you must please, please, please fill in your details. Even if you're here for the very first time, please fill in your details. We'd love to contact you, to speak to you, to get you connected as a family, right? Once a baby is born, you have to help him grow. You have to feed him. You have to change his diaper. You have to wake up at ungodly hours to help your baby go back to sleep, right? So that's what we're going to do. We're here. Our lives are here to serve you. So please fill in the link. We don't want to stalk you. We don't want to be creepy. We just want to contact you and let you join the Vault family. Come on, somebody. I'm so excited, right? And since you've had enough of me, we're about to have a very, very, very fun time. Do you know what time it is? It's the time to be the time that's not the time that was the time, but is the time. Does that make sense? 
Are you lying to me? I don't think that made sense. Play it in slow motion one day. You'll understand if it made sense. But guys, you know what time it is. It's party time. Let's throw it over to Takanya, the legend of boy.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, your name is to be praised. Hallelujah, 
Yes, yes. Thank you, DJ Takanya. You saw it here, experienced it here, felt it here first on the vault live, baby. Shout out to Tabang on the keys, Kanye on the set, Tristan on the drums, and Bila on the other keys because it's normal to have keyboards. Ladies and gentlemen, we know you've had a fantastic time here on the Vault Live. Look what we're talking from in a man with a dread. Talk from in a Dr. Love on the Vault Live. Keep it locked. 